This video is going to delve into a phenomenal tool to support teachers with teaching maths. The website that I'm about to show you is completely free and doesn't even require a sign in, although it can be beneficial. It's brilliant for teaching maths, but I'm sure you'll be able to think of other ways that you can teach this in your lessons too. So let's delve into how to teach using Amplify's Polypad. Let's get into it. To start off with, this is exactly what you'll see from the start. You can sign in, you can make an account, and that way you'll be able to save everything that you do. There's also some additional resources there too, but I wanna show what it looks like without doing that. So you've got your select tool, which is really important for selecting multiple different things and moving them around. Of course, you've got your drawing tools down here. You've got your pencil, you've got your pen, you've got highlighter, ruler for drawing straight lines, and then of course, you've got your rubber there as well. You can just rub everything out. If you're on the pencil tool, you can select the colors that you want to use, for example, blue, uh, and then go from there. So let's just leave it like that. We can also change the grid. We can change it to squares if we need to, depending on what your school looks like. This is what's known as an infinite canvas as well. So we can zoom all the way out or zoom all the way in. This is great as a primary school teacher because children like to see those larger numbers so they can really look at perhaps where misconceptions are being made. Eventually, when you get to the end, you can also export this, and you can export this as a PNG, JPEG, or SVG. Personally, I'd go for PNG for the higher quality. As you can do there, you can zoom in and out using these controls, but you can also use two finger scrolls and things like that as well. Along the side is where things really get powerful. So for now, if we just simply go with a clear background to make things a little bit easier, this is where things become amazing. All these categories on the side have subcategories, and the subcategories are phenomenal. This is where your digital manipulatives come in. So we can go for polygons and shapes. We've got lots of different shapes that we can add in. So if we start with a square, we can then, you can hear that that was a musical tone as well. Behind that, we can do all sorts of things such as duplicate it. And then we've got others where we can upscale it, downscale it, and things like that. This is great for younger children to see that there are those four sides to help with those little bits and pieces like that. So again, if we did a different shape, that sound would look a little bit different there too. Uh, if we go down to 3D shapes, and if we look at perhaps something like a cube, as a primary school teacher, it can be quite hard to teach uh, nets. So we can unfold that and start to look at how those nets perhaps come together. And we can pick really tricky shapes there too. Um, so that's just some of the different ones for shape and measure. We can be making notes on the side and things like that. If I wanted to delete all of those, I would simply go onto the select tool. I can, of course, delete it just like that, but I can also go onto the select tool, highlight all of them, and then just delete it as normal as well. If I go into numbers, we've got all sorts of things such as number bars to support with numbers. We've got different themes and base tens and all those different bits and pieces there too. Number cards, if you wanted to add those in for place value. You've got prime factor circles, arrangements of dots, number grids. And then what's really nice as well is making sure that you go into the other things where you perhaps wouldn't expect to see things. So this here, you've got abacus, hand tiles and bits and pieces like that. Personally, Fractions, fraction walls can be a little bit challenging to teach. So having a fraction wall available is brilliant. So if we've got our hole at the top, we can then separate that out into, let's go eighths. And then if we're looking at equal measure, we can go, right, what's that equal to? If four eighths is equal to what? And then we can get this, and children can be using this as well. Oh, it's equal to a half. And we can be making those notes at the same time um, and going through there. So then we can come across delete everything, go into the drawing tools, rub it out there too. You've also got it available as percentages, decimals, so if you're looking at those percentages, decimals and fractions, you can look at that too. And it exists as circles at the same time too, so you can start to look at how that would look really good with percentages. In algebra, perhaps if you're looking at other things as well, you've got algebra tiles for secondary, scales, it's really powerful, drag the scales in, you might want to drag, okay, this circle in here. Oh, that's going to make that too heavy. And so we'll duplicate it on that side. That's still too heavy. And we bring it onto the other side, balances it up. And you can see that it's starting to work together. It's really, really intelligent. Function machines. I like What I like about function machines is that it can be a little bit tricky for children to understand, right? It's going to go do something and come out another way. Um, so you can help children visualize 
with this uh, here. So if we get one on this side, okay, if we just wanted to change it around, okay, X, this time we're going to add 10 and see what comes out at 11. 2 plus 11, whoa, 30, and we see it starts to build up. From there, we can look at coordinates, which again can be a little bit time consuming to draw things. If you're looking at drawing graphs and grids and things like that, you can just simply bring those in. You can then change the axis if needed. Um, and then just, yeah, change those things as and where needed. We could then extend it out, extend it up. And like I mentioned as well, because it's that infinite canvas, if I wanted to bring that down and we're just focusing on one area and bringing that up, I can then have this on the side as well. I can have different grid coordinates. I can build this in and have that as part of the lesson as well, um, which is really powerful. Finally, we've got a bunch of different things for probability coins, spinners. We've got dice that you can add in, roll that around. We've got coins that we can add in and toss that. Uh, random numbers, things that you might be able to use. Again, there are separate things to support with charts and graphs and bits and pieces like that. When you go all the way down to the bottom, it's important to know that you don't miss out on some of the games and applications here, most particularly the clocks, because teaching time as a primary school teacher is really, really tough. You've got geared and live. Uh, I like teaching time using the geared tools. Again, I'm just going to move into this. And what that means is that you can move this around. You know when you've got the clocks physically? and you're able to move things around and change it and manipulate it. Uh, we can change it to seconds or we can get rid of the seconds and just have the minutes, depending on how old the children are. If you wanted to make it really tough, you could have free moving as well um, to, to bring that in. You've also got currencies. The currencies are really good, especially if you're a you know, British teacher and you're teaching coins and money and things like that. It doesn't have the notes that I can see, but this is good for supporting children with understanding those coins. It's not something we tend to use nowadays, it's all tap and pay, isn't it? But uh, that's available. You've got other things like chess. There's even some computing stuff in there as well. Like I said, other topics. What's really cool, if we go into the corner over here of examples, if we go down to perhaps something like probability and data, you can see if I tap on 100 coins, it comes up. And like I said, it's an infinite canvas. Um, we can then go into the, the coins, we can toss that, and then we can be looking at, okay, how many is that out of 100? What's that as a, as a percentage, etc., and start to look at things that way too. And like I said, once we've done everything, we can go across to export, we can save that as an image. If you do log into this, you'll also be able to save it to the system and then come back to it at a later date as well, which is good if So if you've done maths in the morning, you want to then come back to it and revisit it in the afternoon. So there we go. Absolutely phenomenal tool, completely free for you to use with your class. There's lots of different ways that you'll be able to use this. Let me know some of your different tools that you think are your personal favorites. If you're interested, I've created a comprehensive guide called EdTech Empowered full of 80 plus free tools for you to look at and explore. This is one of the tools that's available on the guide. I'm going to be unpicking some of them on this channel as well, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. But if you wanted to delve into that book, you can just go and check that out. And uh, yeah, it's available on my website, teachtraveltriumph.com. I look forward to seeing how you get on with this tool. Make sure you add those comments of your favorite tools into the comments, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, I'm out.